Okay, welcome to ETN News. This is Hawaii Island, the Big Island, and we got all this activity coming down. Earthquakes. You can see over here on this side, we're start still getting earthquake activity. We had it up in this area, and looks like some big towns or cities down there. But got one here, 2.5, 25.2 miles deep. Still going down toward the slump, and got these here, like I was telling you before, they're following the shelf. You can see them right here. You can see the shelf coming around, and they're following the shelf. So this has to give, if this up here gives, the slump, if it breaks off, it will have to break loose at the bottom at the, you know, before it gives the slip. This is kind of like looking at early warnings right here. Because it's, it's not looking good. Okay, Alaska. Not much going on at all. Let's see how many we have 2.5s and greater. Two small ones. Well, three. There's a 3.7. A 2.5. And... A 3.4 that's pretty small all right let's move on down 2.6 lemon Washington and 2.6 east southeast of plush Oregon 2.7 miles deep then we got the 2.7 Mexico and a 2.8 North northeast of Van Horn, Texas, 4.1 miles deep. And this in New Mexico is 6.2 miles deep. Alright, it's not showing nothing over toward the east. But we got quite a bit of activity. Let's look, look at this. Back it up a little bit. Okay, with what activity we are seeing... And we still got activity around Grapevine, California, after shocks, after that large quake. Okay, we done looked, already looked at that one. We got these coming off of the, thing off the Hayward, and those faults coming down through here, off the Cascadia. They don't enter into the San Andreas until we get on down in this area around Pinnacles. That's when they come in and on the San Andreas. And southeast of Gilroy, 1.2, 6.0 miles deep. I know these are small quakes, but just bear with me. We got to look at the small quakes sometimes and see what's going on. All right. Nothing over toward the east. Let's look and see what Canada is reporting, and they're reporting shaking in Canada, around Bowmanville. And then we got reported shaking, let's see, where is this at down here? Should have been around New York. It was a moment ago. Okay, there it is. Must have passed it up. Around Sydney. That's where that one's located. I thought it was on down toward New York, but it's up around Sydney. Okay, now this is the earthquakes to 2.5 and greater around the world, and we've been getting a lot of activity through here in the west. And over here, here's what we got to look at. All right, we looked at the small activity, see what was going on there, and we got this around Fiji region. It's a 5.2. Then we're looking at how deep they are. 380 point, I mean 82.0 miles deep. 382. All right, this one is a 5.0, 342.7. All right, we move on over to Indonesia. 5.0, 209.1 miles deep. And 
I don't think these was deep because I've done been over them. Yeah, this one here. This is 4.6, 132.7 miles deep. And then we got this one up here around in Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, 116.8 miles deep, a 4.4. Now the rest of these are not that deep, but we're looking at the pattern, the way things are going. And over here in South America, we got a deep one over here. Let's see if we can find it. 44, 88. 22 it must be this one. Now it's 62. Must have already disappeared. Because 44 and, and 88, you know, that's deep, but not real deep. And a lot of people want to know is the deep quakes more harmful or is it the shallow quakes? The shallow quakes, they're closer to the surface, they're up closer to up toward your home and stuff. The deep quakes, it keeps them like a like a rumble. But, you know, the, the shallow quakes is the ones that's more harmful. And another thing is, I see some people that puts comments on the channel that uh, where they never felt a thing. It was right there where they was at, like a, like a, a 3.4 or something, or 4.4, and they don't feel nothing. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because they're sitting on a solid surface. If you don't feel anything, if you're in the middle of where the earthquake is located or at the edge and you don't feel nothing, be glad you don't feel nothing. Be happy about that because that means it's up underneath you is a solid foundation, a thick layer of rock or something. So if you did get a larger quake, like if they got a, if you got a, a four and you didn't feel it, and then you get a six, it's going to be like a three or a four when you do feel it. It's because you're sitting on a solid foundation. And that's the reason that is. Okay, now let's get on with this. And we had this earthquake up here in Russia. They're showing a 7.0 now, 18.0 miles deep. It was a 7.2 when it hit. I mean, how could you downgrade something? If it hits as a 7.2 on the Richter scale, then it means it's a 7.2. It That don't mean that it's uh, lower or higher. It means it's a 7.2 when it comes out. Not unless it hits that one. And then another station that they check is closer to the earthquake and it'll show bigger or they'll go way away from it and pick the other station that shows smaller magnitude because it's so many miles away from the other one land value stuff like that it can you know tourist land value it can mess it all up for the leaders and people okay this one over here around Greece let's look at it 4.1, 30.3 miles deep. All right, we got a large quake coming, and it looks like, well, where did the other earthquake go? Anyway, it looks like it's going to be a 7.0, or we may see that 8, or 8 plus or something, down here around Japan, because it's all blocked off. And the thing about it is, you can look at these quakes, how deep they are, 382, 342, and all that, and then all the way over here, 209, these are still deep quakes coming across. So, they was just here in this area, now they're up here, and we had that 7 plus around Japan, and then we got a, another quake down here in Taiwan. 6.1 I think and now we got this one up here 7.0 was 7.2 actually okay Japan that is in danger but now you we gotta look at this we gotta look at what we're looking at here the Pacific plate is it's got if you look at the how one moves the other one is moving faster than the North American plate so this tail end here is pushing up toward Australia 
this part here is pushing over this way and we got all kinds of plates I mean several several plates in the Pacific all kinds of those going together just like it does in the North American it all went together as one continent just like North America which we got several plates that puts North America together just the same as it is in the Pacific it's all put together so anything could give or you know try to separate or push against each other now Hawaii has been acting up it's right in the middle of all this but we're looking for 7.0 or greater in the next three to five days now where we got this pressure and it's twisting it is possible that it hits on our side down through here it's very possible because right here is where we see the pressure building and when that's how we can tell the quakes are coming they won't let me see anything over here on this side you can't look at the go 16 you can't look at the maps you can't check the, this ground surface it, it don't tell you nothing don't tell you soil temperatures they won't let me into this only well only ones that will let me in is over here in North America and I can see Hawaii good Alaska you know North America United States more like it and North America you know in Alaska as you know it's United States too but it won't let me look over here so I can't tell much so I have to go by what I see on this side the pressure is building and Nova Scotia plates still under pressure and it's causing around El Salvador and Guatemala places like that to be stressed okay we're looking for a large quake be prepared for that large quake it would have to be at least the upper six but I'm looking for a seven plus in the next three to five days and this may be the big one that they was talking about hitting Japan I haven't seen any evidence of it so I keep my mouth shut about that when I don't see evidence it don't matter if they put out a warning it don't matter what they say they said it's going to hit you know and this this and that I don't go by that I go by what I see only I don't go by what they say so now I'm starting to see pressure building up it could hit Japan or it could hit on down through here you know around the ring of fire anywhere but the way the continent is twisting toward New Zealand you know you can see how it roughs like this like the mid-atlantic ridge does like it's spreading apart but this way it's pushing that way the tail end it's hard to understand but once you get to understanding all this the way everything's pushing and when it pushes up against this part over here it's swaying toward this part because North America is coming north you know I don't forgot how it went I got I look at so much but anyway it's coming up toward the north in an angle coming around and that way and this is pushing over that way this is pushing over that way so you got a lot of stress going on be prepared for a large quake and down through here we're getting ready to see some large quakes too it could be threes upper threes fours maybe fives maybe even bigger but when we see this pressure release if you look tomorrow just about every time you'll see small activity starting on the Cascadia where it's trying to release its pressure it can go over toward the east once it hits the fault down through here there's so many fault lines that fork off but when it's a large quake like a seven point something it can only throw off a four or three on certain fault lines not unless you live on a fault that can hold large quakes some can't hold over a one so if you live in one of those areas you don't have much to worry about except for tsunami coming in if something happens all right i'll see you all in the next updates everybody stay safe and we'll be watching three to five days